Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have to solve the following simultaneous equations by substitution. So let me put a little line underneath the method because we have to use the substitution method. Now we have several strategies to solve simultaneous equations and to solve two equations simultaneously at the same time. Yeah? We have the elimination method, we have the substitution method, and we can also do it graphically. All right? So it's good to provide yourself with a few strategies instead of just focusing upon one. Yeah? Because if something happens or something is a slightly different than what you're used to, it's always good to have, let's say, a bag full of tools which you can uh, refer to them eh, to solve the problem. Anyway, substitution method, that's what we have to do. And we have to find out what is the value of x and what is the value of y, so that both equations are true. Now substitution already says that you take something out and you put something for its place eh, back into it, eh, like football, eh, you substitute a player, you take a player out and you put another player back in. Okay. Now there are several steps you have to follow to do this uh, properly. Um, first of all, the first step is you have to make one of the variables in one of the equations the subject. Yeah, so I have to make one of the equations say x equals and then the rest or y equals and then the rest. Yeah, so I'm going to make x or y the subject in one of the equations. Now, and before you do so, it's really, really useful to calmly for 10 seconds have a look which equation do I pick and which variable in that equation. Yeah? For instance, if I would take the second equation and I want to make x the subject, I know that after rearranging the formula, after rearranging the equation, I will have to divide by 8 in the end. Yeah? And if I do so, I will create all sorts of fractions, 6 divided by 8, yeah? 2 divided by 8. It's going to be horrible. Yeah? We don't like fractions. If we can avoid them, let's avoid them. Okay? Now if I look at the first equation, I just have an x there, a 1x. So really it's very, a very good idea to pick the first equation and make x the subject. Not y, because then I'll have to divide by 2 in the end. Again, getting 3 divided by 2, getting all these fractions at 1 divided by 2. Now I'm going to take the first equation, I'm going to make x the subject. So I'm going to write down the equation, so x plus 2y equals 3, and rearranging that, x equals 3 minus 2y, okay, because I took 2y away from the left side of the equal sign, that's only equal if I do the same on the right side. x equals 3 minus 2y, okay. Now, I found that, let me put a little box around that, yeah, I'm not finished yet, but I'm going to box it anyway. I have to now substitute this information in the other equation. So I've picked the first equation, now I'm going to substitute this into the second equation. Now what do I mean with that? Let me write down the second equation. 8x minus 2y equals 6. And now I say that x is the same as 3 minus 2y. I'm going to substitute that, so it's going to say 8 times x, so 8 times 3 minus 2y, minus 2y, sorry, was a bit confused there, equals 6. Let me check that here, because I paused there for a minute, because I was like, minus 2y, minus 2y, is that correct? 8 times x, so 8 times 3 minus 2y, good. And then I continue with the equation, minus 2y equals 6. So now I have substituted the value of x of my first equation into the second equation. And as you can see now, I have only one unknown left, which is y. So I can solve it. Okay. Now, first I have to expand 8 times 3, that is 24. 8 times minus 2y, that is minus 16y. And then I have minus 2y equals 6. Now I am simplifying the left side. Let me write down 24 minus 16y minus 2y. That is minus 
y, and that should equal 6. I'm continuing here now, if you don't mind. Minus 18y equals 6 minus 24. Do you see what I've just done? I took away the 24 here, yeah, by taking away 24. That's only equal if I do the same on the right side. So minus 18y, minus 18y equals 6 minus 24, that is minus 18. I'm only interested in minus 18y, I want to find out y, so I divide by minus 18. That's only equal if I do the same on the other side. Minus 18 divided by minus 18, that is 1m, eh? any number divided by itself is 1. Okay. So quite a process, I agree. So you really need to write down your workings in a very structured manner. And my ink is a little bit thick, so I'm not very happy actually with the way I wrote it down. Yeah, so you make sure it looks better on your piece of paper. Anyway, am I finished? I found Y, it is one, but no, I'm not finished. I need to find X. And to find X, I can simply take this equation, but I could find take any equation, but this one is already rearranged in a way that is helpful because x, I've said, is 3 minus 2 times y. Well, if y is 1, then x is 3 minus 2 times 1. So x is 3 minus 2, so x is 1. So the answer to this problem is x is 1 and y is 1. Yeah, so now I'm finished. And we will guaranteed get questions on our exam like this. You will get a question on solving simultaneous equations. And it's always worth a lot of points. Make sure you are able to do it properly. Okay, I'm gonna check my work. Okay, I'm checking my work because I wanna make sure I'm correct. I'm gonna do it relatively quickly. X plus two Y, so one plus two times one, two. So one plus two, write it down here. 1 plus 2 needs to equal 3, and 1 plus 2 indeed is 3. So the first equation, I can put a big tick through that, that is correct. I'm going to check it for both though. 8 times x, 8 times 1 is 8, minus 2 times y, so minus 2 times 1, and that should equal 6. 8 minus 2, is that 6? It is indeed. So this is the only possible solution for these simultaneous equations, uh, to, uh, for them both to be true simultaneously. All right, a lot of workings. Yeah, you're gonna have a look at some more examples. I'm gonna do a few more, uh, but just to summarize, you pick one of the equations and you pick one of the variables of that equation and make it the subject, yeah? So I've picked the first equation because I can easily make x the subject there, yeah? So take away minus two on both sides, so x is three minus two y. Then I am going to substitute that information in the other equation, and that's why we call it the substitution method. I'm gonna substitute x at a value of x, which is three minus two y, in the other equation. So eight times x, so eight times three minus two y, yeah, minus two y equals six. Then I can solve that for y, and then I substitute that value for y in either equation, but the first one you already rearranged in a way which is helpful uh, to find x. x is one, y is one. Now that is a coincidence that they're both the same, by the way, that's not always the case, but you can check if you're right or wrong by substituting it in both equations again, and then it just all needs to make sense. Okay, again, I've been talking a lot, and um, I want you now to have a look um, at more of my examples uh, because gradually you will understand it better. All the best.